Right, hi, good morning. Um, this is my first attempt at a YouTube video, so I'm sure it's going to be completely rubbish. Um, but here we go anyway. So, um, what we're going to look at today is uh, the logistic equation, which is the following equation where we run an iteration where we have a new value of x, xn plus 1 is equal to xn times 1 minus xn times a constant r, where 0 is less than or equal to r, which is less than or equal to 1. Just try and make that x clear on the left. OK. Right, so we're going to run this iteration. We looked at this a little bit in the lecture, but the first thing we want to do is see what happens when we uh, use different values of r. And in fact, I've already made a mistake. r goes up to 4. So what we want to do is test individual values of r. And uh, when we do this, um, we can start with uh, 0 is less than or equal to x, i, which is less than or equal to 1. If we stick within this bound of 0 to 4 for r, then um, uh, x will always stay between 0 and 1, provided we start with x between 0 and 1. So the first thing we want to do is to have a loop. Now you can write any sort of loop you want. So the loop we want to have is a loop that goes, um, I, I, so if we have a, a loop counter, which might be say in a for loop, NA or something, but in the loop, what we want to do is, well, let's say we have um, NA, is equal to 0 to start with, and x is equal to uh, 0.6 to start with. In the loop, what, what we might want to do first, so our loop is going to be here, is print n a and x. Calculate um, x, calculate the new value of x, and then we're going to uh, add 1 to NA. So when we calculate x, we should calculate x, which is equal to R times. Uh, x times 1 minus x. So that will give us the next value of x in this point here, and we increase Na here. Now, if you've got a for loop, this step here will probably will, will happen within your for loop. If you use a do loop or a while loop, you have to manually make sure you add 1 to Na. And we want to stop the loop at a limit where NA equals maybe 100. You might even want to try a, a higher number. When you want to print it, you could also print to file. Because when we've got these values, what we really want to do is then to plot graph using Excel and what we'll be plotting on the graph would be NA increasing to the right and the values of X between 0 and 1 and we will get and it's really important here that you uh, plot dots don't plot a line it, because you know these are discrete points there's not a continuous point. Now, what I suggest you do is pause the video now 
and uh, work on that and then I'll be and then when you restart it we'll describe the next thing we want to do okay so uh, if you've done that and tried different values of R then uh, we're ready for the next stage and the next stage is slightly different. What we're really, we are interested in long term behavior with different uh, values. And so I'm going to describe a, 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 a set of loops that you want. Now, what we need here. Is going to be nested loops where you put one loop inside another. So what we will do is have uh, you can write these as four loops. I'm not going to uh, tell you what type of loop, but to my mind it's easiest to have four loops but what you want to have is a loop where r goes from zero to four with a step size of maybe i don't know uh 0 0.02 maybe maybe certainly less than 0.1 okay so in that so we, we want to have a loop where we have this then we want to inside this loop we want to initialize x naught say to be equal to 0 0.6 you can try different values and then what we want to do is have another loop where we find long term behavior. And so what we might, what's good to do here is say NA goes from have NA going from uh, zero to uh, about a thousand, say nine, nine, nine. So, and as we go through the loop, what we're going to do is simply calculate X again, which is equal to R times x times 1 minus x and that's all you need all you need is to uh, go around a thousand times calculating the next value of x when we've done that uh, what we need to do is a loop to print results now this isn't inside the loop above this is a separate loop now and so what we need to do in this loop is calculate x we need to do that again and what we need to do is then print okay so I should have said when we calculate the results we're going to do na is about 0 to um, let's say 30 so that's a number you can play with and really we want to print to file so that's f print of course we want to print to a file let's see if i can make that look like file cross on the f print to file we want to print the numbers r and x now the r value is the number we're testing and we're going to step through 
in this top loop here, we're going to test a whole lot of different values of r. And for, so for each value of r, we're going to go through a thousand iterations here, simply finding the, the, the next value of x. And then when we've done that a thousand times, we can then print in a file r and x. And then that's the end of this loop. There's no fancy condition to check for the end. It's just, you know, have we stopped at the limit? And then when we've done that, we need to stop that and make sure we sort of close the file. And then I haven't got much space left, but I'm going to try and draw it here. We want to print a graph with R and X values. using these uh, two columns here. Now, uh, I encourage you to do this in two steps. First of all, you're going to work on just looking at one value of R. When you've got that working, you can then put a loop around the outside. Probably best to use a different program and copy and paste code from the first program. And in your second program, then what you do is you uh, look at um, uh, you look at what happens when you vary R. Now, one strong suggestion is that here, when you're printing R and X values, you want to print, or it's going to be F print F. So the file pointer F in out, for example, if you define that. And I strongly recommend percent G backslash T percent G backslash N with no spaces. I've run out of space here. Here you're going to need to have um, uh, R and X. The reason I'm suggesting this is because... Um, if you save it in that format and give a file name a .xls extension, then when you open it with Excel, it'll immediately put your results into two columns, which you can highlight and print a graph of. Okay, so um, that is uh, my introduction to the logistic equation. And in fact, what we're looking at here is an iterative map And so it also gets called the logistic map. Okay, so uh, apologies for the um, uh, odd uh, quality. I've done this in one take. Uh, I'm sure it, it, it um, is, is obvious. And uh, as I said, this is, I think, my first uh, YouTube video. So let's see if this works. Okay, right, until next time. Uh, what do they always say? Uh, like and comment.